I uncovered a rigid framework that all movies follow, with no exceptions. This video will break down how even RRR adheres to Hollywood's storytelling secret. Check out the videos tab to see if your favorite movie has been exposed. We start as always with a focus on our protagonist, specifically their personality, their inner conflict, and their situation. The value of life by British authority is demonstrated by the purchase of Molly. Then Rom takes on a massive mob with his driving sense of duty and disperses everyone with a brutal fighting ability. Next, we examine where, why, and how our protagonist exists in their world, with a focus on why they don't quite fit in. British authority passes Rom over for promotion, a racial injustice. While they also refuse to return Molly, despite a violent shepherd coming to retrieve her. And Beam dominates the jungle, though his driving force of righteousness contrasts against Rom. Then a brief event happens, one that's never happened before. It's destined to lead all the characters away from their status quo. Beam doubts that Molly is still alive after six months, making the mission all the more desperate. Which leads us to examine the effect of that something new to the status quo, specifically what's different now and what remains the same. Beam is abused and dehumanized by British authority, and they take action to guard themselves against an unseen threat, while Rom accepts the mission to capture the mission in exchange for a promotion. We move along to the discovery that things are less than ideal, or else we explore how badly things are. Both scenarios are common. Rom plans to hunt with subterfuge to infiltrate the resistance while casual abuse is the norm under British occupation, despite not everyone participating. Rom makes contact with one of Beam's own men, then his identity is revealed, and that knowledge escapes in the crowd. Next, our characters dedicate their effort to a specified goal, and this is always narrower in scope than what the third act will demand. Beam learns that he must now dodge a secret cop sneaking around, while Rom doubles down on his mission to sniff out the shepherd. Then we run through a brief checklist of the main story elements that we can expect during this journey. Wild and over-the-top action sequences, a friendship of legendary proportions, Rom's investigation into the shepherd threat, and of course, Beam's rescue mission of Molly. Which brings us to the brief event that launches our characters into the wild jungle of the second act. It's also called the oh shit moment. Beam inquires about Rom's investigation, nearly exposing both men for their true selves. Oh shit. We follow our characters as they discover the new rules and expectations of their journey. These are always distinct to the narrative at play. Rom manipulates the situation to set his friend up with Jenny, then Beam battles through a language barrier and cultural differences to advance his mission. Next, our characters showcase their ability to grow and progress, and this is typically an external or physical beat rather than internal or emotional. Beam discovers that Molly is indeed still alive, then Jenny extends an invite to see him again. Molly receives Beam's message and rallies with hope, while Rom prepares his friend for the party, for Jenny. Then our characters face legitimate and understandable reasons to deviate from their stated convictions, agendas, or desires. Beam suffers culture shock while surrounded by affluent white people, and he's made into a racist spectacle by a bitter royal. We endure the anxiety as our characters face an escalation of problems and complications. Rom and Beam dance their asses off in epic fashion, which works to schism the British ranks, and that leads to their ultimate downfall after a grand battle. Then Rom takes the L in the dance, yet a W as a wingman. Next, our characters evolve internally or emotionally and they do this by using elements of the plot or story which they've gathered and learned so far. Beam reveals that he derives strength from their legendary friendship, and Rom connects a clue, and it leads to an ally of Beam. 
Then our journey-weary characters come to terms with their ongoing struggles. Moments and elements of the first act are used to gauge their progress. Beam enters the British compound, his Act 1 goal met, who experiences a casual affair contrasted from Rom's Act 1 ceremony. Robert's racist abuse is checked, unlike how it was in Act 1. Then Molly echoes through the compound instead of the Act 1 wilderness. Beam's Act 1 rescue mission now shifts into Phase 2, and Rom's Act 1 brutality is revisited, but one on one. Which results in a brief event that strikes at our protagonist core conflict. It's revealed that Rom strayed too far from his old life and has been gone too long, which alludes to Rom losing himself in his own mission. And there's no turning back from here. We receive needed answers alongside our characters, which relate to both their external journeys and their internal conflicts. Rom's time is indeed ticking, though now it literally is because of a snake bite. Then Bean puts the rescue mission into action. Next, our characters complete their narrow scope objective, yet discover that their victory is shallow or altogether meaningless, and must complete a wider scope objective. Beam confesses to his true identity, but he complicates things worse than he knows. Rom suffers the humiliation of his prey under his nose, but the morality of the man he's been hunting is undeniable. Then our characters face an existential conflict that wounds their sense of self and identity or their physical journey. Beam storms the British compound with a menagerie of predators. Then Robert catches and locks up Molly. Rom intervenes with every intention of arresting his friend, and Beam loses the key to the door that hides away his missing sheep. Beam unleashes his full fury, and they see what each other are made of for the first time. Then he escapes amid the chaos to rescue Molly. We celebrate with our protagonist in light of an undeniable win, which is always related to the rebirth in some way. Beam catches up with Molly and the British, and despite his personal loss, he makes one final connection to Rom. Then Rom finally receives the promotion he's been seeking, and it's revealed that the secret cop is really a secret revolutionary. Next, our characters suffer a grand loss, and this is always connected to their newfound inability to quit their journey. British authority ambushed Rom's village and slaughtered the resistance and he suffered the trauma of his entire family dying in a massacre. Then we experience a thematic freefall, as the main story elements are ramped up and thrown into upheaval. Rom's father anoints him with a mission to become a freedom fighter, and his trusted position provides him with an ability to arm the resistance. He tries to reconcile his brutal actions against his own people, yet affirms his British loyalty by publicly whipping Beam, which forces us into a brief event that robs our protagonist of seemingly any hope of success. Catherine provides a spiked whip, elevating the punishment into cold-blooded torture, without any option for Rom to end the abuse of his friend. We watch our characters realize that they cannot return to their first act selves, and they turn to face the wider scope objective. Beam refuses to kneel to British authority, nor confess his actions as wrong, which causes the crowd to turn against their oppressors, and chaos ensues. Rom refuses to fight the giant mob, which he could easily do based on his introduction. Then all missions converge onto him, and he shoulders them with an extreme sense of duty. Next, our characters use the major swings of the story and their personal journeys to move towards the climax. Rom maneuvers the game pieces into place ahead of Beam's execution, and his true loyalty is revealed again, now openly anti-British. The soldiers are chased through the forest, this time Rom is the tiger, while Beam murks a crowd of angry people, taking Rom's place from the opening. Beam and Molly escape because Rom sabotages his mission. Then we revisit his promise to his village to arm the resistance. Then the final confrontation plays out between our protagonist and characters against the antagonistic force. 
a massive manhunt for the Shepherd reinvigorates British cruelty, and Beam discovers the true mission of the secret revolutionary. He stages a prison break to free his best friend, then the pair murk a forest full of military special forces. Which culminates in a brief moment where our protagonist finally, and oftentimes metaphorically, overcomes their place in the Act 1 status quo. Rom channels his father's final lesson using British weapons against them and turns the tide of the occupation. We experience the direct aftermath of the climax. This can give our characters a moment to reflect on the situation or else wind down the action with a coda. Rom and Beam leap from hiding, kicking the asses of a demoralized military. Then they take the fight right to the symbol of British authority. Next, we touch base with additional characters, typically to contrast them against the new status quo. The personification of British authority falls by its own weapons. Then Sita reunites with her fiance after so many years. Jenny is hanging around, though probably just until the revolution kicks into full gear, and the villagers receive the guns and their ability to fight back. Then we conclude with a tight focus on our protagonist, specifically to contrast them against how we met them at the opening. Rom takes his final few steps of his mission, at home at last, and Beam returns Molly to her flock, restoring the value of life. And there you have it. RRR fits perfectly into Hollywood's storytelling secret, and it demonstrates how storytelling from around the globe holds the same core templates. What did you think? Did this movie redefine the modern action epic, or did its fantastical sequences pull you out of the story? I welcome your thoughts and comments below. If you enjoyed this breakdown, you should definitely check out my Prey video, Big Action and Compelling Character Development, check and check, check it out. And please, take care of yourselves out there, and I'll talk to you next time.